Good morning. Welcome to the certificate stuff session. And as we get started, I'm going to go ahead and dive straight in and show you that I have nothing up my sleeve. This is a 2012 R2. Yes, 2012 R2 VM has WMF5. And <clears throat> I want you to notice that there are no administrative tools installed here. And there are no services running on this server. No Active Directory, no certificate services. None of that. This is basically a vanilla, out of the box, 2012 R2. I've just added WMF5 to it. And what I did was I went ahead and pre-staged some modules under the Windows PowerShell modules folder. <clears throat> so we've got the ADCS template module, which you're going to learn about today, X Active Directory, and X ADCS deployment. We want to build a full domain controller with OUs, users, and groups and certificate services on that domain controller so that we and then populate custom templates. That's the whole thing of this session is custom templates from code. So what I'm going to do is I've downloaded this from the gallery, install module ADCS template. I'm going into the examples folder and there's a build ADCS PS1. And this is the code. I'm going to uh, hide the terminal, and I'm going to drop down to the bottom of the DSC configuration. We're going to come back and look at this in just a second, but I want to kick this off now so we have a lab to play with. So I'm just going to change the name to goT2.lab. Got my super secret admin password right there so everybody can see it in plain text. And then I'm just going to hit F5 to run this bad boy. And so now we are building a domain controller with OUs and users and groups and all that good stuff. So while that's rolling, I'm going to explain to you a little, the backstory here. Um, you guys know I used to work for Microsoft for about eight years. And when DSC came out about three years ago, I was traveling all over the country and doing uh, basically helping customers get DSC proof of concept labs set up. And one of the challenges was with DSC, I guess I should introduce myself first. I'm, my name is Bubba. I'm from Ohio. Um, my name is Ashley McGlone. I used to work for Microsoft. Now I work for Tanium. Anyway, uh, my contact information is in the deck at the end, and it's in your little app thing. So uh, I used to travel for Microsoft doing DSC implementations. And the, the sticky part was when I had to teach people how to do credential management in DSC. I'd rather jab a, like a hot poker in my eye, right? It's just really awkward and difficult to do all this uh, certificate dance with encrypting credentials for DSC and that used a custom template for uh, document encryption. And that custom template means it's not there by default in Active Directory Certificate Services when you go look at your templates. How many have used AD Certificate Services? All right, how many have done the little dance, right click, duplicate template, Right, then you check all the boxes. You go through a five page document with all kinds of screenshots from the vendor. Here's how you make our custom template. I hate that. It's not PowerShell. You're clicking stuff, right? We don't click stuff in PowerShell. And so here's the adventure then. I, uh, <clears throat> I worked for Microsoft. And I was actually in Oakland, California uh, for a customer, a little internet music company you've probably heard of. And it was late at night in the hotel. And I think, I'm just going to do this. And so uh, you may or may not be aware, there's the uh, Microsoft uh, protocol specifications are out there for free on the internet. Everybody can read them because of some EU lawsuit years ago. It's going to reboot here. That's, that's cool. It means it's working. Um, it's not a blue screen, I promise. Um, so what happened, we'll see what my VM, yeah, OK, we're good. So I'm a Mac using VMware Fusion. I'm totally outside the Microsoft bubble now, sorry. Um, <clears throat> so, um, what happens, uh, I, I sit there and I'm reading the docs, it's like 2 in the morning and my bloodshot eyes, I should be sleeping, I'm like, i got to do this, and I get this code working for a one-off module I published in the gallery before I left Microsoft, so the code was public, and I couldn't, because so I, I couldn't take code with me, so I just dumped everything before I left Microsoft, dumped it to the web. So now the code's all public, so out there I went ahead and published a module in the gallery that all it did was a one-off script module that would create that encryption certificate for ADCS or in the uh, document encryption to do the certificate encryption stuff for credentials in DSC. And I always knew I would come back to that 
and make it where I could run any certificate template through that. But I knew it was going to take some, some clever coding, and I didn't have time for it. So ain't nobody got time for that. So I put it off, and then I came to Tanium. It's like, wait a minute. OK, Tanium's another one of those vendors that has a custom cert template that's not there by default. And they've got the five page paper, screenshots, click, click, click. And it's like, oh, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> so I said, i got to automate this, right? So what I did <clears throat> was I went back, and I said, OK, I'm going to retool this now and refactor this code. I'm going to make it so I could take any template. So here's, here's the process. What you're going to do is you're going to go into AD Certificate Services, and you're going to do the right click, duplicate, dance once for the template. Because I'm not about to try to code by hand all those little check boxes and all those little tabs in the certificate stuff. That's just, you know, orders of magnitude of difficulty. I'm, I'm not going there. But what I am going to do, though, is I'm going to give you a way, once you do it once, you're done. And I'm going to show you, we're going to export that template then to JSON, which is a handy interchangeable file format. And then we're going to import that in any time. I did this for lab builds, right? Because I get all the way through an automated lab build, but I get stuck at this certificate template problem. How do I make a custom template? And so I kept getting stuck there. So I said, I'm going to fix this. And now I can do a fully automated DC with AD certificate services, and it's all ready to go. I can even publish that to the CA, the issuer, and then I can even permission it, set it for enroll or auto-enroll, all that, with, and you just specify a couple parameters, and you're good to go. So let's log in now and take a look. Remember, there was nothing in here, nothing up my little Tron t-shirt sleeve. All right, so let's go take a look. And now, if I fire up Server Manager, and give it a chance to refresh here. And what you'll notice over here on the left is there's AD Certificate Services, Active Directory, Directory Services, and DNS and IIS because we have the cert enrollment going there. And then if I go over here, you'll see that I'm lazy and I installed all the GUI RSAT tools for AD and DNS and everything else. All right. So let's go uh, take a look at, at how this works. Uh, we're just going to drive uh, right down to the modules folder, ADCS template, and I'm going to zoom this all up here in a second. And here's the module. And what I've got, here it comes. There we are. All right. Um, tell you what, let's go on a little tour. Let's fire up ADSI edit. I'm going to do this with the GUI first. And then I'm going to show you from the command line. So in ADSI edit, you right click, connect to your current domain, and in the middle you pick configuration. This is the forest wide partition for, for the forest configuration. And inside there is a <coughs> little spot called services. And under services is public key services. And I'm going to zoom in so you can see this. All right. So what we've got is uh, I've got a laser pointer in here, never mind. So uh, public key services, this, this is where your templates live in Active Directory. So if I go into the Active Directory or the Certificate Services console and I create a new template, it shows up down under here. We've got public key services, and then we have the um, OID, OID. Reminds me of that Domino's Pizza commercial, avoid the OID, you remember that one? <laughs> anyway, um, NOID, yeah. Uh, so then we got enrollment services, which is where the CAs live. And then we got certificate templates. So I'm a, my, I know a little bit about AD. I know a little bit about PowerShell. And really, I don't know anything about certificates. You guys should not trust anything I say about certificates. All right. I'm not a certificate expert, but I'm a hacker. And I know I can figure this out and reverse engineer it. And what I'm about to show you is completely not endorsed by Microsoft because the story where I forgot to tell you the rest of the story. So, so I wrote this code to do this. And there's this PM at Microsoft for, I think he actually just left after like 30 years at Microsoft. And I email him. I say, look, uh, you're the certificate services guy. You know, I kind of went through the chain. I found the guy. And I said, here's this module I wrote to do what people are struggling with in the GUI. With, you know, they can't do that in PowerShell. And he's like, use the API. 
I was like, well, I tried that. I'm not a developer. I work for Microsoft. I'm not a developer. All right, so I, I, I looked at the API. I gave it my best. And this was, I think this would be incomprehensible even for a, a .NET veteran developer. I mean, just the API was impossible. So uh, I waited a month. I went back to the same guy. I said, hey, um, I got this module. Would you look at it at least? You know, see, is, is this doing what it's supposed to do? And he's like, use the API. I did that like three times, and I gave up. But then as I was going out the door at Microsoft, I published the code for everybody. So anyway, so these objects are what we're going to be working with, reverse engineering in PowerShell. So what happens when I create these certificates, first off, uh, under the OIDs, well, let's, let's go look at the easy stuff. So here's certificate templates. This list should look kind of familiar. All right, there's the rec EFS recovery, there's machine certificate template, there's user workstation web server, all those things that they tell you to go click in the GUI. All right, so I look there, and then I look under enrollment services, and all this is right here is just the publishing, the issuer CA is listed here. And then under OID, right here, if I look at the, there's an OID list. OID, object identifier, and this was the thorny part. It's like, okay, where do those numbers come from? Do we just pick up the Scrabble bag and dump all the, the, the characters out and just make up a number here? What do we do? Well, it turns out, because uh, I did this in multiple forests specifically, because if you look under the properties of this OID item here, this container, what you'll find right here is a forest specific PKI cert template OID. Big long number with lots of dots in it, okay? And there are RFCs that explain what every one of those little numbers mean. And I'm not going there today. But this is unique to every forest. So I figured that out when I was reverse engineering it. And so I knew that when I created a template, then I have to begin the OID with that forest specific and then add some other stuff after it. Well, getting that other stuff after it got really weird. I went through all the public uh, protocol documentation, couldn't find anything. So what I ended up doing was I wrote a function called get random hex. I just made it up. All right, so I just made up, and I got this hex string, and I just returned how many, how many characters of random hex do you want, pass it a length. And then I got a little function, once it generates the OID, it checks just to make sure it's unique, it's highly random that it would ever create a duplicate. But then I've got this new template OID, and this is where it gets kind of really sci-fi. So uh, what I discovered was that there are two components. You can't just go create a template. You have to create the OID, and then the template references that OID. So there's, there's two steps there. And then you publish the template to the CA. So there's three different touches in AD to make one of these templates in the GUI show up. So what I did then was I took this uh, OID MSPKI cert template OID property. And that's composed of that forest base OID plus some long number followed by some other long number. Then the, and so that's the OID object in the directory. And then on top of that, there's, you take the same last little number, and then you put this 32 hex characters after it. And that's what I was able to uh, discern just with my powers of observation from looking at ADSI edit. Well, a couple weeks ago, I knew the session was coming up. And so I kicked it out to GitHub. I put the module out there, and I said, hey, Anybody want to help check this out before my session? Make sure nobody else sees something I'm doing wrong. And there's this MVP out of Latvia. I can't pronounce his name. Uh, Vadim, yeah, Vadim, he is amazing. This dude is a really sharp shooter, and he's all about PKI. So Vadim says, hey, you know that PM at Microsoft? Yeah, I had this conversation with him back in like, and he actually posted a screenshot of the email from this, and I'm, not, I'm just not gonna, I'm gonna leave his name out, out of respect for this guy. Um, and so he posts it and he says, uh, yeah, those numbers, those aren't random numbers. That's actually an MD5 hash, 
32, and I was like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. 32 characters, hex, it's a hash. Okay, so uh, it's a hash over like this oid thing, everything that comes before it. I haven't fixed that yet. I haven't figured that out. Because um, that was just two weeks ago, I haven't had a chance to update the code. Wink, wink, it still works just fine, but uh, it's not to the spec that the API would generate. So I'm telling you this up front so you know this guy is half-baked and you shouldn't trust this in production. But it works great in my lab. You can use it in production if you want, but it, my use case is rapidly building labs over and over, right? I just want to build up my lab, get my template out there so I can register it and everything works and really people could care less what those little numbers are they stuck way back in the directory somewhere. So what I did then was I created this little algorithm that says, all right, because oid part number one, oid part number two, and or oid part number three. And then we just jam those together, and we say we've read out of Active Directory that uh, forest oid. So we, get, we take the forest oid plus oid part one and oid part two, and then the name is going to be oid part two and oid part three. So that's it. It's just some string stuff, right? And so that then generates the stuff that goes into the template. Um, get ADCS template, all it does is, oh, I, I should mention there's a little trick. So um, in Active Directory, let me just pull this up. I didn't change my font size there. Let's do it down here in the terminal. So get dash AD forest. All right, there's my forest info. But get AD root DSE has some really cool attributes on it which includes the naming context for the configuration partition. So the configuration, because no matter what the, the path is the same except for the little domain part at the end. So what you do programmatically is you just say, give me the ADDS, uh, root DSC configuration naming context, and then you append on that this path here. Certificate templates, public key services, services, plus the config naming context. And so that's how I generate the Active Directory path where these objects are going to live. So get um, AD certificate template, what it does is just a function I call over and over throughout the module that's gonna go look in that path and give me a list of templates. And then if I want the specific one, it'll do the display name, otherwise it's gonna give me all of them, where the object class is PKI certificate template. Right, this is really pretty basic Active Directory commandlet stuff. It's just doing it with really weird objects that aren't users and groups, okay? But it's really just basic AD commandlet stuff. Um, has anybody watched my AD MBA, AD PowerShell MBA video? Okay. If you're not aware, go out to MicrosoftVirtualAcademy.com. I have six hours of free training on Active Directory PowerShell. So it's me and Jason Helmick, the loud guy up front, really funny speaker running around this week. So me and Jason did six hours on Active Directory PowerShell. And so if you're not familiar with some of this stuff, go watch that video, it'll really help. So, um, so where's the magic happen then? How do we get this stuff in and out of uh, the directory? Uh, let's go scroll down here. Actually, let's go watch this stuff work. Let's, let's play for a little bit. So down here, what I want to show you is that I can do things like this. So um, get dash ADCS template. So this is one of the commandlets in the module. And so there's a basically dumping all the AD attributes of all the templates that are in the directory. So that gets to be kind of long. So then let's pipe that to format table name. Actually, let's sort by name, pipe to FT name. So here's a list of the certificate templates that are in the certificate services instance. That doesn't mean they're published. Those are just the certificate templates. All right, so then I can say, um, watch this, new dash ADCS drive. Ha! Oh, CD ADCS colon DIR. And now I'm in what we were looking at in ADSI edit from the command line. All right. So you can map, like the AD colon drive letter you get, all we did was just instead map it down to the configuration partition. And because I'm running as a forest admin with like every permission in the world, nobody cares about permissions here. So, so now I'm in there and I can do CD space, 
you always use tab complete here because you don't want to type all this mess. Certificate templates, DIR, there's the certificate templates. CD dot dot DIR. I can go to CD uh, tab to enrollment services, DIR, there's my um, server. Now, what I want to show you is, uh, let's do this, uh, let's say get item, I'm going to grab this item here and put it around parentheses and I always, as long as I've typed distinguished name, it's painful after all these years still to type that much, there's the distinguished name. And then what I'm going to do is, because the drive doesn't expose all the properties on the object, I want you to see a specific property here. So uh, let's do get ad object dash identity. Oops. Dash identity. There we go. And then we're going to say dash property star. Friends don't let friends use filter star property star. And then fl star. All right. What I want you to see is right here. So on the certificate server, the publishing server, there's a property for the CA that says, here's a list of the CN properties, the names of all the templates that this issuer is allowed to give out. So there's two different certificate services views. There's the template view, but then you actually browse to the CA itself and you go to that one where it's like, here's all the published certificates. This is the list. So it's a multi-value attribute in AD. And all I have to do, all I have to do to publish a template is to add one entry on the multi-value entry here for that CA. All right, I, I see some wheels turning. People going, oh, this is cool. All right. I'm glad you think this is cool because my wife could care less. All right. <laughs> so uh, now. Uh, what we can do then is, let's say, let's go back to C drive. It doesn't really matter where I am. I'm going to go to the root of C here. All right. So now let's do uh, get command dash module ADCS template. So I've got export, get, new drive, new template, remove, and then set the ACL. So now let's do um, export. ADCS template dash display name uh, web server template. Wait a minute. Did I, what? what? What's going on here? All right. That was weird. Let's do this. Let's do uh, get ADCS template. And pipe that to FT name. I thought for sure there was a web server in there. Web. Yeah, is it web, web server. server? Yeah, did I not spell that right? Export ADCS template dash display name web server. Try it again and get the same result. All right, let's do PC CMS, PS, PS CMS. There we go. All right, that's what I was after. So um, this basically just takes the attributes that we looked at in Active Directory a second ago and dumps them out to uh, <laughs> JSON. But here's the trick. Um, JSON thinks everything's a string. And I know good and well that if I pipe those squirrely certificate template objects to get member, there's only going to be about half those things that are actually strings. They're going to be some weird Active Directory property data type, right? And there's like byte arrays. Oh, that's scary, right? So how do I do this? So what? What I had to do was when I, when I import that JSON to make a new template, uh, what I do is first off, I create the new template void. I create that object. I'm using splatting here. So in Active Directory, when you're working with the AD object commandlets, there's an other attributes parameter, which basically takes a hash table of property values. So what I did was I built a hash table that says display name, this flags one that looked like it was important, and then some certificate template OID that I generated. And so I create the OID first. And then I go in and I import that little JSON bit, and I create a new object or other attributes hash table that starts out with the OID that I've generated because it needs to be unique in this forest. But then I do this little switch dance. 
on the names of the property values I'm reading in from the JSON. And it says basically, hey, if you've got a property name that matches any one of these things, then dump that into the hash table of properties as a int32 value. All right, if it's a one of these property values, that's one of those funky AD types right here. So what we're doing is we're bringing it into a hash table with property name, casting that string into that fancy data type on the other in the value side of the hash table. So we're building this hash table of all the properties, and then we're going to go bam and pass it into the object, and it creates the object then. So, uh, and then the expiration period is a byte array. So what happens then down here, all this fancy looking square bracket JSON thing, that all becomes a byte array. Now, the other thing, like I said, there was no way I was gonna try to reverse engineer every checkbox and whatever and everything. So what, what you need to understand in, uh, this is probably one of the least touched interfaces in all of Microsoft Server, I think, by any product team. It looks like it's still from you know, NT4 or something when you pull up the, NT, uh, the certificate services. Let's go look there real quick. I'm gonna go to tool, actually, let me uh, just fire up MMC, because that's the other joy of certificate management is building the MMC, <laughs> right? So let's, uh, let's add a snap in here for certificate templates and certificate authority. Yes, it's this box. Okay, and I know that's really tiny. I promise I'll zoom it. But what I want you to see here is that in my, I'll show you the DSC config. Let's go look at the DSC config real quick. So in that examples folder, there's a DSC config. Now, here's the challenge. With DSC, you've, you're limited to which data types you can pass through the moth. And I knew there was no way I could pass those fancy AD data types through the moth. That's why I did it as one massive JSON string. So I dodged a bullet, I cheated the system. And so what my uh, DSC does is it brings in the AD, the ADCS deployment, and then my ADCS template. So this module does not have DSC in the name, but there's a resource for creating these templates in there when you import it. So here's the stuff that I've demoed in previous PowerShell uh, events, my standard routine for building a DC, building a domain, building OUs, recycle bin, populating users and groups in those OUs, and then we get down here to building the certificate server. Uh, so I've got my ADCS cert authority. I think I just took this straight out of the sample for the ADCS deployment uh, resource. Web enrollment, RSAT for ADCS, because I'm lazy. And then down here, web enrollment. And then right here is my resource. And so I dropped two, te two templates in here that I wanted to create in my lab. Uh, one says uh, PowerShell CMS. Anybody played with the cryptographic message syntax commandlets in V5? It is so cool. It's like your orphan Annie decoder ring. I mean, you can, you can take any text that you get anywhere in PowerShell and pipe it through an, uh, encrypted an encryption type certificate, and it just turns it into you know, gobbledygook. So uh, I'll, I'll do a demo of that in just a second. So here's, I've created this PowerShell cryptographic message syntax template. That's the display name. I'm going to grant domain computers and domain controllers uh, the ability to enroll by default and then also auto-enroll, which is completely non-production, right? You would have dedicated groups for the, which servers you wanted to get those templates. And then I've got my Tanium template as, as well. But notice the configuration data has the JSON in it. So if I scroll down to the config data section of my DSC, oh, look at that, isn't that a beautiful thing? I just got a big here string. And so I'm literally just feeding it a JSON template to build out that whole certificate with all the check boxes and all the tabs and AD certificate services, all right? I've completely obvious, er, uh, abstracted all the complexity of the certificate details, the template details, just by taking, you check the boxes one time, export it to JSON, and you're done forever. And then you just put this big here string in there, which you could read from a database, you could read it out of a text file, you could, you know, any way you want to automate this is fine. 
So uh, I've got two big JSON strings in there, and I just bring those into the DSC, and the MOF file loves string data. It's perfect. It goes right through. Lickety splits, just like a fast pass at TSA. So, uh, so then once I get down here in my demo file, I want you to see how fun this is. Uh, what you can do then, and this is all in the module you can go download today. So what you can do then is, let's say, okay, let's look in my local certificate store. And it looks like the auto enrollment already kicked in because I have a key encipherment um, key usage there. See that? It's already registered because um, I have group policy set to auto enroll or whatever. But what I could do, if I necessary, is I could just do this little get certificate thing. And then, oh, by the way, rabbit trail, squirrel. Uh, there's a command let add dash ca template. I thought, my job's done, there's an add CA template commandlet. All it does is take an existing template and publish it to the CA. Just tweaks that little multi-value attribute. That's it, it doesn't create templates, all right? I couldn't find anywhere else to do this. All right, so here we go. Um, we've got our template now, and I can go grab my document encryption certificate. What? All right, let's, let's just make sure here. Let's go grab another one. Think. All right, we've got a cert. Go grab my document encryption certificate. And so I'm just reading my local cert directory. I've got this special certificate. And now you've got this command that protect CMS message using this newly generated thing. And it gives you an encrypted message. So uh, Lee Holmes wrote these. It was based on some RFC that he d dug up. And it's a, a really friendly way to do encryption, decryption using certificates. You just have to have this special template, which now you can do for, for easy and for grins. And in the sample examples directory, there's a JSON export of that template already. You just import it, and then you're good to go with your DSC credential encryption or your commandlets for this. So you can take any protect CMS message. It's really cool. You can pipe stuff to it and give it a certificate, and it just sends it through the, the scrambler. So really neat. then you can decrypt it as well with unprotect CMS message. That technique is what we use to encrypt credentials in DSC. So when you see the encrypted credential in the MOF file and it's got begin CMS, end CMS, that's what it is. It's using this behind the scenes. All right. Uh, let's see, have I hit enough rabbit trails yet? Let's go now to get command. Oh, you know what? I didn't show you the actual stuff. Let's go look in the GUI and see what we made. Um, again, I'm gonna cheat and use the GUI here for AD users and computers. Here's my Tanium OU, my users and groups, and I'll, I'll show you real quick that uh, I know this is really tiny. So my, uh, my DSC for the DC created the Tanium OU, the groups, the users underneath of it. It created the group called Gtanium, and then you'll see the users over here, and then inside that group, Gtanium, there are the members. So that's all done through DSC. Has nothing to do with today's session. I've done this for previous sessions. But what I want you to see then, on top of that, is when I go to uh, certificate services over here, my templates, it created from scratch using that uh, JSON template here, the PowerShell cryptographic message syntax. And when you look at the security, on the security tab, you see that we chose domain computers, domain controllers for enroll and auto enroll. And there they are uh, domain computers, domain controllers, checkbox, enroll, auto enroll, because uh, it's just tweaking the ACL on those AD objects. It's nothing fancy, really. Um, you're just setting the ACL. And I need to update that code to make it a little cleaner, but it works pretty well. It's using set ACL. Uh, there's actually every AD object has an NT security descriptor property which has the ACL in it, and you can work with that, and you use that uh, squirrely.net method of getting the ACE object, and you add ACE entries, which are kind of really scary looking until you figure them out. But then once you get it figured out, it's like, okay, you just got some template code, drop that in, add some. You just have to look at, you just reverse engineer all this, okay? You just go look at an existing certificate template, set the permissions the way you want, and then you go dump the object from that pr 
attribute, and you go see what the permissions look like, and then you just recreate those in, in code. That's kind of how that works. Um, I know I went through that really fast, but anyway, it's all in the code. You can look at it. So we did get two templates in there, PFCMS and uh, Tanium. And then over here on cert templates that are on the actual published templates on the CA, you'll see there's the Tanium and the PSCMS <laughs> templates right at the top of the list. So we completely built an Active Directory domain, OUs, users and groups, certificate services, enrollment services, templates with no touch, no right click, no screenshots, no clicky clicky. All right. Now let's have some fun. Let's, that was fun, I thought, in a nerdy kind of way. But uh, was it Linda? I guess they called this week Nerd Camp. I mean, this is, this is really what it's all about. This is, this is fun stuff. So let's play with this a little bit. So now let's do um, get ADCS template display name PSCMS. So here's the template uh, that we just created. Now, you know that little right click dance that you do? What if we wanted to build another one of these? Let's say export, export that, and we get a JSON string, all right? We can dump that JSON string to a file, whatever. But now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put that in parentheses because this is PowerShell, and I can do that. And now I'm gonna say new-adcs template. Jason's next door. Jason, keep it down over there. <laughs> Let's see if they can hear me. All right. Uh, new AD, sorry, I shouldn't have yelled in the mic, apologize. New ADCS template, um, now we're gonna say dash display name, PSCMS2, it's gonna make a copy of it, dash JSON, we're reading right now live a JSON export of another existing template in the templates list, and we're gonna pass that JSON to a new one. This is the same thing you would do with a little right click duplicate in the GUI. All right, but then at the end of this, what we're going to do is we're going to say um, dash, uh, we can pass a server identity. Let's do, because we're living large here in the lab, let's do domain guests. It's a quick, easy demo group. Um, and then we'll say dash auto enroll. So by default, you have to have read and enroll permissions, so it'll give you that automatically. And then if you want this template to be auto-enrolled, you just say dash auto-enroll, and it adds that to the uh, ACL as well. So one command line to duplicate and create and publish. Actually, I've got to put dash publish on there, too. What? What did I miss? I missed the space? Oh, thank you, Jason. Good catch. Go T2 is my domain. Yeah, and now it's actually, that one already exists, so let's call this one, I've done this a lot of times in the lab now. Uh, we're gonna call this, this is good, because we're gonna get a bunch of junk in there to clean up. We'll call this PSCMS3. All right, that worked. And that's an artifact, and the, uh, the ish is an artifact in, the, in VS Code, we've seen plenty of those, right? So now I go back over here to refresh in the view of certificate templates, and here we are. There's PSCMS, two, three, one line of code just duplicated the template, and then I drill into that one and go to security. Oh, there's, okay, there's all these little check boxes, and the crazy thing about every one of these little check boxes and all this stuff that looks really smart and, and super duper is all like bit flags in those numeric values in the properties of the object. That's why I said there's no way I'm gonna ever try to reverse engineer all that. I just wanted one big dump. And by the way, the DSC resource for this, it doesn't attempt to validate any of that. It just says, do I have a template with this name or not? So I want to make sure you know that we're not doing any super magic to make sure you didn't miss a checkbox somewhere on your DSC stuff. We're not doing that. We're just making sure the template name exists. I go to security here, and there's domain guests, completely violation of any production environment, giving them <laughs> enroll and auto enroll to this template. All right. So. We did that all from the command line uh, with no um, clicky clicky. Yay. 
All right, so now let's do this. Uh, get dash ad cs template. And pipe that to where display name like, and let's say uh, ps cms star. All right, so and then pipe that to ft name. So here's my three CMS templates, right? And now what we want to do is take that and we'll grab, actually we'll say, let's do a for each, remove dash ADCS template uh, dash display name dollar underbar. Oh, look at that. Advanced functions, confirmation. Are you sure you really want to do this? Perform the action, remove certificate template on this uh, thing way out there in AD land somewhere. I'm going to hit yes. Uh-oh. Didn't like that. I uh, cannot validate framework identity. Uh-oh. So maybe this is something to do with the changes I made last night and published. <laughs> um, OK. It's supposed to remove the objects. Um, OK. So uh, yeah, go down the, load the code, but don't delete anything until I fix that. Yeah, you'll be good. So let's go, uh, let's go review these certificates uh, here. They should not, if it had worked correctly. No, it didn't. Uh, it didn't look like it. Nope. OK, I got some code to fix, but that's what I get for changing code at midnight. So <laughs> anyway, um, so this is out there on the gallery at uh, install dash module ADCS template. And it's some really interesting code for you to study as you're learning PowerShell and some of the techniques that I use. There's also tons of like extra comments and links and kind of this hasn't gone through the script analyzer. This is not high quality module guidelines here. I'm about, about half of that high quality module stuff, right? There's no, there's no pester test, but uh, it works, right? And that's, that's what we're all after at the end of the day. I want some code that works. So, and, and I'm not trying to disparage my code, but just say, hey, I want to set the bar appropriately here. And this is not coming out of the PowerShell team. All right. So there it is um, out on GitHub. And there's documentation out there. And in the, I tried to put a lot of commandlet help in. So there's help for every one of these commandlets with really good examples to show you how these work. And uh, maybe during uh, Iron Scripter, I'll get this code updated on the remove. Maybe I didn't test that scenario. I really do need some pester tests in the module if anybody wants to write them. It's out on GitHub. So anyway, uh, so that's fully automating the creation, publishing, and permissioning of AD certificate templates with no clicky clicky. Thank you very much. All right, we got time for a couple questions. Yeah, you said you were uh, generating that OID randomly. Is that the same uh, generation as the VB scripts that are used for generating that initial OID for the CA template? I have no idea. Okay. I didn't know there were such scripts. Yeah, there's a VB script out there that actually generates it based on your domain scheme and stuff. But when it, okay. a script kind of fails if you don't have the right permissions. You know, Send me a link to that. Or just drop it like out on the GitHub yeah. in the issues list. Just drop that in there and say, because there's an ongoing issue thing between me and Vadim's about the OID. Just drop it as a comment in there, because yeah. I'd love to. Because actually, I looked. He said, um, he said, yeah, the the PM told me this is a hash and all this, and I said, oh, that's great. It's, it's not publicly documented anywhere. But then I thought, wait a minute, this is X509 RFC certificates. So I, so I. So I went out to the RFC documentation for this certificate OID thing, and there was no mention of MD5 hashes or how to generate that. I don't know if that's a Microsoft implementation or like standard stuff or what, but good question. And those templates that you're generating, they're like SHA-2 and things like that, right? Whatever your server's set to. Well, when you, uh, your templates have to be set to sign, uh, but by default they're set to SHA-1 until you actually modify it. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. So, however, however you generated it in your lab setup before you did the export that you start to import everywhere, that's what it's going to look like. Okay. Yeah. And what about the schema number, uh, the schema versions on those uh, templates? That's another issue on my GitHub right. of setting the schema version correctly. So you're not supposed to publish like a version three schema on a 2003 certificate server. They don't work, right? So Vadim pointed that out to me as well, and I'm like, no, that's not in there either, but 
if I'm I'm not ever going to I'm not ever going back that far, right? So I'm not I'm not sweating that one because I know it's only going to get newer, so it shouldn't be a problem. Supposedly, Supposedly. yeah. Like I said, it works. Wink, wink. Yeah. So my questions were kind of around that. I see one of the. I was just reading as I was sitting here on your GitHub. Um, or in my, yeah, GitHub. But, you know, I think that's something. I see you're working on. That's great. But it looks like your publish just goes to all enterprise mm -hmm. PAs. You know, and I think that should be. But you think it'd be safer to say do all your code, but then still use, you know, be able to pass a parameter. Yeah. Environment. I got an offline run. I got right. Two CAs doing this. Uh huh. Two CAs are for that. You know, right. Sort of separate it out that way. So if I have to, you know. I'm really glad you mentioned that. Because in the code, if you read the comments, it says, hey, look, guy, this is going everywhere. So when I do the publish, I just go enumerate that enrollment container out there in AD. And for every CA, I go down and publish the cert on every one of them, which is really not what you want to do in production. Like I said, this is not production code. It's for building a lab where I've got a single instance uh, standalone certificate server, and I just need a template, right? But yes, that's definitely on a list of things that you should take this code and change it so that there's a parameter that says which CAs do you want. And maybe you could query that out of the directory and say pick which CAs you want to actually publish to. You can create a branch and submit it. Sure. Yeah. I would love I that. Put a CA on my domain controller either. Yeah, that's no. <laughs> right, right. You you wouldn't do that either. Like I said, this is all Wink, wink, nod, nod. I'm building a lab quickly with DSC, and I couldn't get past this one roadblock, so now we can't. Yeah. All right. So thanks, everybody. This has been a lot of fun. Hope you've had fun, and I'll start the trauma music back up. All right.